Well, g'day, it's uh, Peter Jennings here from Professional Boat Care. Uh, we got quite an adventure ahead of us, two weeks into the Coral Sea. Uh, this is the boat. It's a uh, client of ours, uh, the Sinjero. She's a uh, 68 Nordhaven. You'll get to see lots more of her and all the adventures. So this is the 28 Boston Whaler that belongs to the boat as well and we tow her on these sort of trips. So it was just a quick check over again of the engines, make sure everything's squared away and then we moved down to the fuel dock. These Nordhavens are built for ocean passage making. Beautiful boats, very well appointed. The 68 carries about 13,000 litres. So we went down to fill her up to the brim and also fill up the auxiliary petrol tanks, which we have for the uh, Boston Whaler and the other tenders. <laughs> so I've been fortunate enough to grow up in a unique boating family where we actually towed a 32 foot game boat to Cairns every year from Brisbane. So I've done a fair bit of towing and I know the pitfalls and we were under no illusions as to, you know, what could go wrong in this trip out into the Coral Sea. But as you can see, conditions were just perfect. So we made our way out of Moreton Bay as the sun set and settled in for the evening. On a boat like this and on a trip like this, you want to have it well catered for. And we were very lucky with this crew. One of the boys had a stand at the markets. Another one had a catering and food outlet. So. And they all loved getting in amongst it in the galley, so we ate well. So as dawn broke, we were making our way up the outside of Fraser Island. About 12 hours into our 50-hour passage. We were hugging fairly close to the island before we sort of swung out and got more east, northeast into our direction. Current's always an unknown, but generally that time of year we've got a lot of north current. So we're trying to keep out of that. That might seem a bit crazy. Marlin fishing, dragging a couple of lures while we're towing a boat, but we did this on the way to Sydney a few years ago and actually Managed to catch a blue marlin. Marlin break, marlin breaking. <laughs> and as you can see, lots of tackle preparation. There was going to be a lot of tackle used and lost out there. So I had been to Cato, which is a little bit south of uh, Wreck Reef, but I hadn't been to Wreck, so it was good. But there's some good literature on all this stuff from uh, other cruising people, um, like this guide here. So after nearly 50 hours passage, there's the wreck reef off to our starboard. And you can see it on the sonar there. Yeah. So we pulled the uh, whaler in and put the boys on it to go ahead and just scout around, see where a suitable anchorage is.
And of course, in record time, we were anchored and heading out for our first little session, which proved to be pretty action packed. Get a photo, that's the biggest fish down here. Look at the beautiful colours. Sharks here. Is there a shark? Two of them. They're everywhere. Now they just ate your tuna, eh? Yeah, tuna just got eaten big time. Yeah. Little back. Yeah. That's a win. 137. I'm in the bite. Oh, I can't strike it. Right there. Oh, he's on. Oh, he's off. Drop him. Welcome to Wreck Reef, that Coral Sea. Well, I think that little session was everything they had dreamed would happen. So it was time to go back to our lovely, comfortable mothership and uh, take it all in. So it wasn't a great anchorage wreck and we actually had to anchor the Boston Whaler off for the night. So we decided to push on through to Ken Reef, um, which has this little hidey hole behind the sand cave. I'll tell you, conditions are pretty good when you can wash the boat on the way. And that was interesting. The only people we, the only other boat we saw in the whole trip were guys we know from Brisbane. That carbo belonged to a 90 foot mothership. All the reefs were probably about eight, ten hours apart. But as we approached uh, Ken, conditions were almost too good. Once it glasses off like that, you can't see the reef. So again, we put the boys in the uh, whaler and sent them ahead. It's not a bad anchorage, Ken. As you can see, you can poke right up in there. It's very shallow and you got a couple of metres below you. But once anchored, it was time to go off and do some reef fishing. I told you the trout would be in 50 metres. Well, I'll get the gas. And there's sharks right there too. Oh my God, dinosaur! Hello, mate, trout roughly. The guy that came with the most avocado. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Coral trout. So this one's the coral trout. This one's the jellyfish. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hey. 
So these reefs are about 350 nautical miles east of the mainland of Australia, well outside rescue chopper sort of reach. So um, it's an amazing feeling though, being so far out there and having it all to ourselves. So after a quick breakfast, it was uh, out fishing again. The days were basically made up of morning sessions on the whaler, back for lunch on the mothership, and then back out for some more action on the whaler. Give him one to in there. Of course, it was a massive thrill catching these personal best coral trout, but they are a bit risky to eat, risk of catching cigateria poisoning. So we released them, mostly released oh, successfully. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Getting Talking about coming out here for a while, looking for that big trout. How do you feel, mate? Good, thanks yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So back inside the lagoon, it was just magnificent, particularly at low tide, which we had through the middle of the day, where we'd go and do a bit of exploring and a bit of spear fishing. This drone shot shows you the anchorage and the San K. Some amazing sto stories of uh, people being shipwrecked and surviving back in the 1830s and the like. Worth looking up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I'll run over his head. It's out of gear. And I've got enough oil. You just dump it. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Captain oh, Pete! That's epic. That's a good turn. Most nights we managed to have the uh, whaler alongside, but it did get a bit rough on the high tides and we'd anchor it off when needed. There's always a bit of fun around the boat at night, catching and releasing sharks. Oh, he's right at it, back it off. Oh, that's the GT. It's a, is it? No, it's a shark. Oh, it's a tiger, little, little tiger. tiger. Feed it, Munga. Hit it out. No. Yeah, 
He might be different, eh? Oh, I got good target. Yeah. 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 Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stay tight. So the end of another great day out on the reef. They really are a couple of magnificent boats. A joy to look after, I must say. So this was amazing, going ashore and uh, walking across the reef, it's a little bit challenging, but eventually getting to these incredible anchors, which were all relics from the ships that were wrecked there. You just can't believe what it would have been like stuck there back in 1830s, running out of water, a long, long way from home. Probably the whole, yeah, anchor, horse pipe, chain. Being the uh, only dry land around, most of these sand caves are bird rookeries. So we did our best not to disturb them. Just got some shots and then left. Metal, copper. Amazing finding those old bits of uh, shipwreck. We left them there, of course. So the spearfishing was great, but the sharks were pretty hectic. But it was good having the dinghy there to stick with him. So after that, we went out and did some more reef fishing. Job fish were plentiful. Good fish. But so were the sharks. Here we I don't think 
That's a solid fish. On one. Bad There were a lot of sharks and we did lose a lot of good fish to them, but we beat them a lot of the time too. That's a wahoo, all right. As you've seen, there was a lot of fishing going on, but today was beautiful. So we thought, let's go ashore and set up for a nice big barbecue lunch. Quite a novel thing to do, 350 nautical miles offshore. Of course, there's only so much picnicking you do, and there's a lot of fish to be caught. So we went back out, did some trolling. So this was one of those afternoons where the weather didn't allow us to tie the boat alongside overnight. But it was a bit nerve-wracking leaving her out there. As is typical of a two-week trip, you are going to encounter some not-so-good weather. We did have a bit of wind and uh, weather come through there for a couple of days. This is a good overall shot just to show you where we are in relation to the mainland. So you can see the, all the Coral Sea Islands there, bordered by that yellow line. Uh, you come down the uh, Barrier Reef and uh, that's the area we're in. There's, there's Ken and Wreck and then we're going to go over to Frederick in a day or so. That's the main part of the barrier reef there and the swains. And this is a map that uh, shows the area bounded by all the, uh, all the uh, green zones and fishing zones. So we loaded the, tend the little tender on board and uh, prepared everything to leave in the evening to go to uh, Frederick Reef. Yeah, look at that. They're the bombies, you gotta watch. Almost clear of all the bombies. So we ran a track out into clear water and then anchored up. But to fill in the afternoon, the boys decided to run out and chase some wahoo. I stayed on the big boat and pre prepared everything for the evening passage. They sure had some fun here, as you'll see. Fuck up! 
Right, just make sure you're not allowed. Shark coming. Alright, I need to fly, so I'll try and get this one off. Video now. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! This is two of the six. <laughs> so unfortunately this wahoo got bitten while they were catching it. So they put it back out just to have a bit of uh, video fun with the sharks. <laughs> So we had to fill in a few hours because we couldn't leave till about 9 p.m. So I spent the time in the engine room just cleaning all the uh, sea strainers out and uh, doing a few jobs around the place. Then after dinner, we got the tow line ready and we followed our track very carefully back out into the clear water and started our overnight passage for Frederick. So, right on cue in the morning, we approach Frederick Reef. That's the light. It's out there. And uh, we timed it so we had enough sun in the sky to see the bombies as we came in. And we're just going to poke up. <laughs> Safety dive. So the uh, retrieval line shackle had undone. So Paulie was our man to the rescue. Frederick Reef has a reputation for good dog tooth tuna. We'd also seen some yellowfin busting. So we were straight back out into it. Really big, really for a little head. <laughs> a little hat! <laughs> <laughs> the trap 
Town, baby. Yeah. Yo! other side of him. All the shark bite. See all the scratches? <laughs> up, up to the button. Yeah. Ah, shark. Again, unfortunately this dog tooth was bitten in the fight, so they used it for a bit of video action. It might seem wasteful, but we couldn't eat it. We'd already reached bag limits. Freezers were full. It was nice to let some fish go, but unfortunately that one was bitten. This one is Sally's recipe. Sally's recipe, you can't tell her. <laughs> Panko specialty. So good. Here's the hands. I mean, It's the story you're missing. <laughs> Turn him, guys. Turn him, Tom. Oh, no. All right. The swivels? Yeah, I think we're all right. Smile! So the day before we were planning our trip home, we woke up to some pretty ordinary weather. We had a uh, trough that had developed over us, um, producing sort of up to 30 knots. But it was very comfy sitting it out on the Sanjero, and we just waited, and we were going to reassess the weather the next day. So with the forecast improving for our passage home, it was time to uh, get the whaler back on the tow line, um, rather challengingly get the small tender up onto the bow on that rolling boat, but we managed to do it all, no damage, and uh, then head off.
did a fair bit of analysing of the weather. Obviously, when you've got a 45 to 50 hour passage ahead with a boat on the tow line, you want to get it right. We spoke to some uh, weather experts in Brisbane and uh, decided we'd push off. So after a nearly 50 hour passage, we eventually got back to Brisbane, to Manly Harbour and reflected on what a fantastic adventure it had been. So uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of other trips on this boat and others in Cairns where I marlin fish and some boat maintenance tip videos as well. Thanks for watching.